my channel. My name is Jacqueline. You can find me over on Instagram as at Jacqueline Salem. This is a YouTube channel all about my knitting and sewing and whatever crafty adventures I happen to get up to. In today's video, I'm going to show you the projects that I have sewn in October. So it's the first day of November. We're moving into the cooler weather now. And so I wanted to show you some of the things that I have finished lately. It has been a lot of knits around here lately. If you've watched my two uh, fabric haul videos that I've posted in the past month, you'll have seen a lot of knits fabrics because I need to replace a lot of the like basic tees, like what I'm wearing right now. Um, most of them I purchased from fast fashion, places like H&M and Forever 21 and all that, all that stuff, probably, I don't know, like seven years ago now. And they're just, they're just dying in my wardrobe now. So it's time to sew up some basics and I figured I would much rather sew them myself than purchase them from a shop. So that's what I've been mostly busy working on. I'll show you all of that in a little bit and let's jump into the video. So the first thing is something I'm wearing. This is the Agnes Top by Tilly and the Buttons. It is a tried and true favorite for me. By the way, any patterns or fabrics that I mention will be in the description box below, so you can find all of that info there. But again, this is the Agnes Top by Tilly and the Buttons. It's so comfortable, it fits so well. It's just such a great pattern. I will say the only modification I routinely make to it is that the neckband piece is always a little bit too long for me for some reason. Um, I've heard a lot of people mention this too to me in my DMs when I've sewed it, so I think it's a common, uh, commonly known issue, but really I end up taking like probably two inches out of it before I sew it and then that helps uh, keep the neckband tight and like draws in the fabric of the bodice. But other than that, I sew my usual size. I am a pear shape so I do whatever the 36 inch is for the bust and then grade the pattern pieces out to a 41 inch at the hip and I get a really good fit this way. Uh, I will show you in a little bit but I have been Thinking about experimenting with the neckline on this one a little bit, so I this is just sewn like as is, but I would like to start sewing some lower scoops. I did try that on one I'll show you in a minute, but I would love to try to do some lower scoop, a square neckline maybe. We'll see how it goes. So yes, this is the Agnes Top by Tilly and the Buttons, and the fabric is a black jersey knit that I got from fabric.com. The next project is the same one as this one. Like I said, I needed a lot of basics. This is another Agnes Top by Tilly and the Buttons again. Uh, the only modification that I made this time was that I cut the scoop a little bit lower. I'd say about an inch lower. And I think I could get away with honestly doing it even lower. Because I cut the neckband lower, I did leave the neckband as is in the pattern. So like I said, for this shirt, I normally cut it about two inches shorter. But for this one, I uh, left the neckband as is, and I think it fits pretty well. There, it is a little bit loose. I think it could have made it a little bit smaller, but all in all, a good pattern. The fabric is a medium weight rib knit, bamboo rib knit from Blackbird Fabrics. And this is their light heathered gray color. And I love that it's kind of this warm gray. It looks really nice on, and just another neutral basic tee that I can wear with so many things in my wardrobe. So this was a real winner. I really recommend the medium weight rib knit from Blackbird Fabrics. They do have a lightweight also that I have yet to try, but I really would like to try that one sometime in the future. So those are both of the Agnes tops that I've sewn. Next, I'm going to show you the Megan Nielsen Rowan bodysuit slash uh, turtlenecks, I guess, because I didn't sew the bodysuit for any of them. I just sewed them as turtleneck tops. So this is the first one that I sewed. And if you follow me on Instagram, you will know that this is the second iteration of this top because I sewed the first one in the same fabric and discovered that it was just too small for my liking. This pattern has a lot of negative ease built into it, like a lot, too much for me, too much for my comfort. So what I ended up doing was taking the Agnes top pattern pieces and using that as a comparison for the Rowan top 
pattern pieces and cutting out the size accordingly. I think I ended up sizing up about three sizes. I probably could have gotten away with doing just two sizes because the seam allowance for the Agnes top is five eighths of an inch and the seam allowance for the Rowan bodysuit is a quarter of an inch. So just something to keep in mind. But when I tried on the first iteration of this top, it was just way too tight for my comfort. And as you can see, this top still has plenty of positive, or not positive, plenty of negative ease in it. So I'm much happier now that I have sized up with the Rowan bodysuit. And if you plan on making this, I would highly suggest doing the same, um, comparing it to other knits fabrics that you have in your stash. Of course, if you're making like a true bodysuit bodysuit, like for dancing or for working out, or you want something that's like hyper, hyper fitted to you, then maybe the bodysuit as the pattern recommends for like your sizing would be something you're interested in. But for me, it was just a little too, little too tight for how I wanted to wear it in my comfort. I will say the neckband is still giving me some issues. If I cut the neckband out at the size that the Agnes top would kind of lead me to cutting for the Rowan. It's just a little bit too big. It almost looks like a 60s like mock turtleneck, cowl neck kind of like situation. It's not super fitted, let's just say that. So I've been testing out with the subsequent two uh, Megan Nielsen turtlenecks that I've made after this one that I need to make the neckband a little bit smaller so that again it draws the fabric of the bodice in tighter and also fits more snugly. I won't say it looks bad with the bigger neckband, it's just that it's not the look as the pattern intends it to be when you're wearing it. So just something to know. You'll see in the cutaways how this one looks a little bit bigger. And then when I discovered that, I ended up cutting the neckband shorter when attaching it to the other two that I've made. And uh, just so you know, this one is a red stripe from fabric.com. Again, all of this will be in the description box. I love this fabric so much. This one is a little bit see-through, so I do have to wear like a, a tank top or something underneath it, like a cami, but that's fine. I wear camis a lot, so. And small sacrifice for that adorable red stripe fabric. So this was my second iteration of the Megan Nielsen Rowan top. And this one again is this Blackbird Fabrics rib knit in the periwinkle color. And I am just in love with this color. It's such an unusual color for me to gravitate toward, but this light blue for some reason, because if you know me and my wardrobe, I'm all about dark colors and neutrals. So introducing something like a light blue into my wardrobe is very unusual for me, but I was so looking forward to this fabric and it did not disappoint. I absolutely love it. So I think this is going to hopefully get a lot of use because I just love the color. I think it's so fun. I will say since I finished my Agnes tops and my Rowan turtlenecks, I've still been reaching for the scoop necks more. I don't know why, I think I just like the aesthetic of them more in my wardrobe. It's kind of what I'm used to wearing. I like, I like the scoop look. It's not that I think the turtlenecks look bad or anything, I think they look great, but it's just not as much my personal style as the scoop is. So I think I'm gonna pause on making any further turtlenecks just to make sure I'm actually wearing the ones that I sew. That way I know if I'm not reaching for them often enough, then I'll just sew the Agnes top exclusively from here on out. But I do really love this one. And I wore it last weekend. I think it's so, so cute. I love this color. So that is my second Rowan turtleneck. And then my third Rowan turtleneck is this one because I think I have enough with my Blackbird fabric orders to make two tops out of the fabric that I order. So I'm going to be making a Rowan bodysuit or Rowan top and an Agnes top for both. Um, watch it. You can watch. Oh, okay. <laughs> stay, stay. Where are you going? No, no. Nowhere? Okay, so 
I think with the fabric amounts that I have, because I have two meters of anything that I ordered from Blackbird Fabrics, that's enough fabric to get both a Rowan turtleneck and an Agnes top out of it, uh, which is great because this way I can get two tops out of it instead of just one. So a meter is slightly more than a yard, so whenever I order two meters, I can get two tops out of it, whereas if I only order my usual yard amount, it's just slightly too little for the amount I need to get two tops. So I'm considering, uh, with my fabric.com orders in the future, getting two and a half yards, because with that just that little bit extra, that half a yard, I can get two tops out of it instead of one uh, top with the two yards with an extra large remnant that's just kind of, it's not enough to be useful. So, note to self for the future. Next finished project, and I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see it, is this dress that I made using McCall's M7777. Sorry, it's not M7, not 7777. It's 8116. It's, how, it's so hard to keep track of their names, honestly, because they're numbers, but anyway. Yes, McCall's M8116 for the bodice and then I attached a half circle skirt to the bottom. I have to be honest, I don't think I would recommend this pattern. I should. I was suspicious when I opened it and saw on the inside that the cup sizes are, because it's essentially like a bustier style pattern, it's like a bra with a bottom attached to it. So I was a little bit suspicious when I opened the packet and saw that the bra cups were not sized by uh, cup size, like A, B, C, D, you know and it's instead graded by the size of the pattern that you pick for the bust area, which you would, in theory, would think would be fine, but your cup size is different from that. It just like doesn't, it doesn't work. It needed to be a cup size pattern. So when I opened that and saw it, I knew I was gonna have problems. And um, yeah, it was pretty much confirmed exactly what happened. So it ended up being where I scooped a lot out of the bottom of the bowl of the cup size, but it's still a little bit too big. It's not like unflattering technically when I wear it. It just doesn't fit as well as a lot of my other dresses. So I just don't think I'm going to make this bodice pattern again. And fun fact, I ended up using not that you're going to be able to see, again, because it's black fabric, which hides a lot of things, but I ended up using the lining of the bodice as the outside and the gathered cup for the inside because I felt like the non-gathered side looked better. So the interior, the lining part, which is what shows, is like a... If I can put like a little diagram on the screen of it, I will, but it's got, you know, like the two pieces for the undercut, like it would for a lot of bra patterns, and then the top part of the bra cup. And I just liked that more than the gathered side, so I ended up using that as the outside. So that's fun. Um, again, like I said, attached a half circle skirt to it, and I just love like variations on the half circle skirt. It works really well for a pair body shape because I can pick kind of whatever bodice I want to and grade it out to the size I need for the hips and then can cut a custom skirt that I know is gonna fit me really well. And the drape on circle skirts is just really nice, whether it's a quarter, half, three quarter. I've not made a three quarter circle skirt before, but I really love a half circle skirt because it takes literally less fabric than a whole circle skirt, but it has a lot of movement, a lot of flow. So I really like it, but this fabric is also from fabric.com, this really pretty rayon chalet. It's black with floral print, and it's just super swishy and drapey and fun to sew, and yeah, I really liked it. Um, just like I said, I won't be sewing this bodice pattern again, but it doesn't mean that I don't like the dress. I've already worn it a couple times, and it's really comfortable, too. It's going to be a good one for... Uh, warmer weather, of course, and then in the cooler months, I'd just layer it with a long sleeve shirt underneath. The last finished thing that I have to show you is this amazing skirt. So I bought the Bemberg Rayon lining fabric specifically for this fabric that I already had in my stash. This is from some mystery shop in Bay Ridge. Um, it's a neighborhood I used to live in before I moved to where I live now. And it's this amazing iridescent fabric. If I show you, I can't really show you up close 
how it works because the camera won't be able to like focus on it but essentially it's woven with black and with these like yellow chartreuse threads in the opposite direction so that when the skirt moves or when the fabric moves it kind of creates this iridescent quality and I think it's just going to be such a great holiday skirt. I sewed it into the mini length uh, purposefully. I had enough to do um, probably at least a midi skirt but I ended up going for the mini because I'm realizing more and more the reason I wear my cami skirts so often is because they're in this length that allows me to like wear tights and like a cute or you know basic top with it. It's just something that fits into my personal style really well and I don't really have that many shorter skirts anymore. I have the two cami skirts and that's essentially it. So I need more short skirts in my life. The only thing I need to do is finish the bottom of this. I just surged the bottom of the lining and left it at that. But I need to finish off the main fabric in some way. And I'm honestly not sure how to do that because rolled hems and I are just not friends. Uh, I've actually never attempted a rolled hem on my serger, so maybe the serger would be easier, but I have tried it on my Bernina and my old brother machine, and I just could not get the hang of it with a lot of practice. So I might just end up serging it and calling it a day. I think it'll be the most floaty option after a rolled hem, of course, but I just don't know how the rolled hem is going to work out. Although I did see a really great hack from... Uh, so bake make on Instagram for creating a like a rolled hem of sorts so I may try that on some scrap to see how it goes but yeah this is just super cute love how this one turned out and that is it for today's projects I hope you liked this video if you did please give it a thumbs up it helps other people find it in YouTube's algorithm you can also support this channel by contributing over on patreon I share exclusive content over there on Tuesdays and Fridays usually and don't forget to follow me on Instagram I'm at Jacqueline Salem over there so I will see you in the next video take care be well bye You want to sit in my lap? Sit down. All right. We have a lap co-host today.